what I'd like to do today is I'd like to take what we've done so far as motivation to look closely at the electrical double layer. Key high points of what we've done so far, we talked about simple solutions to the Navier-Stokes equations. Specifically, we looked at an integral boundary layer analysis of electroosmosis. That integral boundary layer analysis did not require that we know any details about the electrical double layer, only that we knew what was going on at the boundaries, which is that at the wall there was a potential that was different from the bulk and a no-slip condition. And then once we got into the bulk, there was a defined potential, but an unknown velocity. And we saw for that velocity with an integral analysis. It also told us, because the form of the equations was actually quite simple, that the velocity was everywhere similar to the potential in the electrical double layer. So as long as you know what phi of y is, you know what u of y is. But we didn't do anything with, uh, we couldn't do anything with that because we didn't know what phi of y was. However, that was enough for us to get some general information about how electroosmotic flows might go, identify some regions where there's no vorticity and where potential flow solutions work, identify the fact that in general, even if it's not potential, it's a Stokes flow solution. And so we talked very briefly about those equations and give a hint at what some of the solution techniques would be. For example, healy shaw flows and potential flow analysis for that sort of bounded Stokes flow, and also multipolar solutions for both potential and Stokes flow. But we didn't get into that very deeply, again, because it's going to become more relevant uh, maybe four, five, six weeks from now. So what we want to do now is we want to take that analysis of the electrical double layer and if anyone else has any stuff they want to throw at the garbage can up, we're more than happy to pick it up. If, uh, what we want to do is we want to take this analysis of the electrical double layer and we want to actually solve the equations. When we do this, we're going to get a description of what the spatial distribution of velocity and potential are on those boundary layers. We're also going to get a picture of how charge redistributes itself in an equilibrium system. This will also forecast how things will get interesting when we start studying dynamic electrical double layers which will lead to nonlinear electrokinetic effects. So for the moment, what we're going to do now is an equilibrium analysis of the electrical double layer, primarily focused on the direction normal to the wall. And we're going to both derive and solve the Poisson-Boltzmann equation. In so doing, we're going to get equations or expressions for the electrical potential as a function of y, and also the concentrations as a function of y. And in doing that, there are two key dimensional parameters that will come out of this that will uh, flow naturally from the governing equation. One is the Debye length of lambda d, and one is the thermal voltage RT over F. We'll talk a little bit, because non-dimensionalization will be a key part of our analysis of the Poisson-Boltzmann equation, we'll point out some differences in the interaction between the boundary conditions and the non-dimensionalization of, say, the Navier-Stokes equations as compared to the boundary conditions and how they relate to the non-dimensionalization of the Poisson-Boltzmann equation. So that's our plan.